Okay. Ach sikskanatani. Pleasant morning. It is approaching 8 o'clock in the a.m. on an overcast and somewhat cool, breezy Tuesday, September 17th, 2019, in the latter part of the lunar cycle, Bakipists, Otsidetsby, when the choke cherries ripen, which is our second to last winter or summer lunar cycle, but winter is definitely like the signs of it approaching are here. <laughs> I'm coming to you from some of the north side coolies near where I live. In fact, over my shoulder here, you can see dirt kicked off from the uh, coyote den where earlier in the summer I introduced those three pups. Haven't seen any any hide or hair of that family. I don't know if I freaked them out and they moved um, or hopefully not. Hopefully they didn't get like like caught up with the uh, with the Lethbridge coyote killer because I think there is a serial killer of coyotes out here in the coolies who carries a 22, um, most likely male, because women don't do that shit, <laughs> and has been knocking off coyotes um, for a couple of years. Now we're getting foxes in Lethbridge, lots more fox, uh, because of the absence of the coyotes due to this, this guy or guys. Um, but anyway, that's beside the fact. Hopefully this, this family's okay, they just went to go live somewhere else because I was bugging him too much. Um, any case, I'm down here today not just to look at the coyotes. Um, I just wanted to take a brief walk out, maybe collect a couple of cactus berries and introduce a different kind of video. Um, a video that's about like the little stuff, the little stuff that happens in the day rather than the big arcing narratives. <laughs> like just spotting these guys, right? These, uh, this is a Spurge Hawk Moth Larva. There's a, there's a few of them here. I got another one down in here, another one just over here. Yeah, they're eating the Spurge, leafy Spurge leaves. These guys were actually brought in here uh, to kill the leafy Spurge, which is a native plant, by the way, but agriculture hates it. They look really vicious. Look at that big red spine hanging off the back, but you know what? Oh, it doesn't hurt. He doesn't stab you with it. It's not poisonous. It's just all for show. <laughs> um, yeah, this kind of little things. Little things throughout the day. I often end up with clips that I don't use in my videos. Clips of stuff that don't fit into those overarching narratives. In the last maybe four or five days, I've, I've caught several of those clips. Things that I'd, I'd love to show everybody. They just don't fit into any day's uh, video, you know, any any day's journal entry. So I thought today, maybe as I go through um, my my round of whatever happens, <laughs> we're gonna start off with Samus and the and the program that's launched. And by the way, really awesome group that I have there. I hope I can introduce you guys to them and everything, um, or at least show show parts of what we're we're doing as we go along. But I think this is gonna be. Um, after yesterday, I think this is going to be perhaps one of the most pleasant winters I've had in maybe half a decade or more. Probably more. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really nice winter working with these artists, um, playing around, trying to, trying to get into retail of Blackfoot art, making some money, and um, just, to, just, you know, really enjoying the, the game that we're in. And, you know, waking up, waking up every day at my new place with Chelsea and the kids, that too. Like, I think, I think things are going to be on the up for me. I have a positive feeling at this moment. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll be all, all droopy and in remorse again. But um, today I'm feeling good. Any case, yeah, I figured I'd carry the camera with me as I go about my rounds. And I'll introduce a bunch of random video clips from the last few days that otherwise would not have ended up on YouTube. Check it out. Well, we might as well start off with some of the wildlife encounters I've had this week. Um, maybe we'll begin, well, obviously with this skunk I'm about to release, but also with a rattlesnake. Yesterday, I got a call from the University of Lethbridge security. They had a rattlesnake deep in this concrete crevice. Um, in their breezeway 
And so they wanted it out of there. Come on, Skunky, can you get out? Can you get out? Let's go. Come on, back up. Yeah, get out of the cage. They wanted the rattlesnake out of there, and so I was gently kind of coaxing her out. <laughs> but, you know, you can only be so gentle when, when, when a snake is wedged in concrete. I made sure not to, like, pry her up or... You know, if she was if she was stuck in any way, I didn't pull her, but I did keep kind of using my hook, uh, poking at her and, and pulling her body up through the crevice. And I think at some point she probably got injured because she started to get really bitey, and that was right toward the end. And at that time, um, the crevice had moved just out of foc out of focus of the frame, I believe, <laughs> when I reviewed the video. So it wasn't the best video, but it, it could have been really exciting because she shot up a few times at me. You're going to see me flinch. You're going to see a part of her shot at me. Um, and then I get her out, I extract her, and then you get to see at least the release. So this is kind of the, unless I get another one in the next couple of days, this is the rattlesnake of the week. See those you jaws little coming little out, yeah. Butter. Yeah. Well, he's pissed off because yeah. all that yeah. abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Even before I'd encountered that snake though, I had an encounter with a raccoon that was kind of interesting. It was midday, it was pretty late, somebody had a raccoon in their own trap and they wanted me to come release it. And so I took it down to the river bottom in Indian Battle Park, it was a bit crowded. And I thought, ah, this is a good opportunity to show people how to do an impromptu but discreet release of a raccoon from inside of one's vehicle. <laughs> Okay, I am going to demonstrate a quick and discreet backdoor release of a small mammal like this raccoon that I have in here who's very upset. This is to use if you're in the country and you don't want neighbors to see a release in them. <laughs> or if you're down in a city park like I am uh, in the middle of the day on a weekend when there's a lot of people around and you want to do something discreet. Here's how you do it. Off she goes. Not quite sure what to say about this next couple videos. I guess for me, they just highlight animal cuteness. <laughs> the first one is a little brown bat. I've been getting quite a few, well, one every couple of days or so, 
calls about bats in people's houses and for the most part once I just kind of explain what they have to do um, they take care of it for themselves if not I'll go get it but I charge them like 40 bucks to extract it from their house and it's it's a really simple thing you just put a leather glove on or you know grab it and take it outside and let it go <laughs> but any case um, so this this is a little brown bat that that didn't want to be released. I always just take them to my own backyard for the release and hope that they stay. They don't, but <laughs> maybe one day. Um, this guy didn't want to leave the little carrier that I pack him into when I when I pick him up from the house. Um, so I left him overnight. He eventually took off. And then the second shot, uh, the second video, video clip is from my daily walk with Roly Poly. Um, he he likes to chase after birds out on the um, high school football fields and stuff, the soccer fields. And he normally runs after goals, but he the other day decided to run after a, a family of magpies. And one of the young males kind of took offense, <laughs> decided to chase him back. Little bat, are you ever going to come out of there? You got too comfortable. You got too comfortable. All right, I'm gonna put you in the shed overnight. We'll see. There you go. Holy party. There's my boy. There's my boy. Oh, there's my Polly. He's gonna bite your butt, Polly. You don't know, Magpie, but this dog actually lives with birds. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you do know. Maybe that's part of what's going on. I think you just want a little bite of tail in retaliation for Polly chasing you guys. <laughs> it's a young one. See, this one born this, this brood this season. That's about it for my animal encounters over the past few days, at least the interesting ones that I thought to video record. Um, just wrapped up my day's session with the Indigenous Arts and Entrepreneurship crew here at the facility that I prepped for Samus Aboriginal Employment and Training. And yeah, just day two, so not a lot to report here. Yesterday was pretty much orientation, and then they got into a team building group project that they continued with today. Um, and that's kind of the workflow that they're gonna have throughout this program is the mornings are gonna be spent in kind of classroom business training. And then the afternoons are gonna be spent actually learning artistic techniques and applying them toward building an inventory. So they haven't started into the art proper yet, like not the, uh, not the stuff they're gonna sell, but what I did to, to start the program off was um, I threw them a big block of canvas, 12 by 14 foot uh, piece of heavy canvas and a bunch of acrylic paint, some brushes, um, some paper plates to use as palettes, you know, some ground cloths, all this kind of stuff. And told them, you know, we really need to claim this space, right? It's just so bland in here, these, these cream walls. Um, let's make this look like us, right? And so, have at it. It's kind of like a reality show challenge. Do what you guys think and work together um, to create something. So what they came up with was they cut the they cut the canvas into four large panels, and they're basically making uh, murals. Each one depicts an important indigenous animal. Um, each one focuses on a color. Uh, they're going to hang them in directions associated with those colors. It's not necessarily like Blackfoot Orthodox stuff, but this is um, this is what they want to work with. So 
so what they've what they have is a, a turtle an eagle a bison a bear and they're working on making those murals um, they have the animals but they also have each one also has some other stuff going on in it some of its personal um, kind of representation of each individual in the class some of its political some of its you know identity focused um, throwing some blackfoot symbol blackfoot specific symbolism in there um, or I think on the eagle one that's not even you know painted at all yet but just kind of traced out uh, in, in pencil as yet I think they're going to do something for murdered and, and missing indigenous uh, women so we're going to put uh, some red hand, hand prints on that one in the long run. But yeah, I got a little video clip of them working on this stuff this afternoon. I'll show you that little clip. Back on the home front, we're starting to prepare for Halloween and for the arrival of cold in general. Got a couple of clips to show you. Uh, the first one involves Little Reed, the night that I brought this scary skeleton ghoul thing home from the dollar store. Um, I spooked the kids with it, and then they had some fun spooking each other. And then Little Reed was even able to spook himself. <laughs> um, second clip is kind of the end product of... I don't even know how, how many hours work. Over the past week and a half or so, I've been constructing a three-tiered bunk bed. Made it a, a do-it-yourself video project at the same time. Um, so I'm not sure if that video will go up before or after this one. But the end product is a bed that uh, the three kids have now in their own room. And they're really happy about it. Um, you know, William got over his little... Uh, his little problems that he voiced in this video. But any case, check these these two clips out. <laughs> Did he scare you? What's <laughs> you for you to come back? We are now on video. Mm -hmm. My first time we got here. First time on your bunk bed, mm -hmm. on your new bunk bed. What I, you... I wake up, I might do this, and I might bang my head and knock out. Yeah, so you figure there's a design flaw? You're worried about banging your head? Yeah. I could have probably put you a little bit lower, because there's plenty of room here for Who Miss Cody. That? Hey. And, and Reed, no fair. Cody's got good room. Reed's got really good room for little Reed, man. Yeah, him can't. But that's okay because he's more likely to bonk his head. My, my <laughs> read. I'll bonk my head. I wish the, the wall was way bigger. Look, look. I'm. Well, at least you get to be up by the ceiling. The big kid. Hey. Hey, I can see the windows. And you got the bed and you wanted? Unicorns. That was supposed to be her bed. Dinosaurs. What do you got up there? Fortnite? I got unicorns, uh -huh. Sophie. <laughs> Unicorn. You guys got it pretty good. Hey, Mom, can I want this grilled on here? Like my stuffy right here. I'm going to go in. I'm going to use the bathroom. Climb on down. Yeah, let's see the, let's see the use of the ladder. Let's see this tested out. Hey, I can just watch him here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's able to step down. And he's like, it's very skinny up there. My sock is stuck. You should take your socks off. Hey, I can see you. I can see you. I can see you. Mama? Yes, baby? I love you. I love you. <laughs> 
Mommy, I love you. I love Mommy, you too. what yeah. kind of books okay. are we going to read? It's my book. Three books. Are I took over. <laughs> you got plenty of books. I took over. We got ten little I got this is actually my bed. It's a bed. And because I like to laugh so much, as y'all know, I'm going to leave you with this last bit. Or rather, it's a, a bit of a bit. <laughs> this is my very funny friend, Brandon, and I hope he, he doesn't mind me putting this up there. Um, but he's an as aspiring comedian, and he's been jumping on the open mics at Good Times, which is our local comedy club, which I highly suggest if you live in Lethbridge and you hadn't been to Good Times yet. Um, go check it out. Lots of fun. After the the tattoo festival that, that featured in one of my recent update videos, uh, Chelsea and I went over to Good Times to catch the tail end of a com comedian roast. Like it was like a bunch of comedians roasting each other, a, a roast battle. And um, Brandon just happened to be there. He's really excited to see us and uh, sat with us and um, enjoyed the show. And then after the show, he's like, Man, I've been doing open mics, and I was, you should go up there and, and do do five minutes. So uh, he asked the, the club owners, and they were like, go ahead, go up there, get five minutes. So he went up. There was, there was still a lot of the audience hanging around, and he gave her he gave her five, and it was he had some funny jokes. And uh, this was my favorite, or or the kind of the the tail end, the punchline end of my favorite. Brandon was talking about how he uh, agrees in his own way that the homeless situation in Lethbridge is, is like the walking dead. It's like, uh, it's, it's like in real life, uh, real life I'm sort of um, uh, uh, walking dead. Because these guys are all like, and you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 